welcome everyone and uh, we are the welcoming tonight the New Jersey Social Justice Remembrance Coalition for a program commemorating the 1886 racially motivated murder of Samuel Mingo Jack Johnson in Eatontown, the victim of New Jersey's only documented lynching. No one was ever held accountable. Reverend Kerwin Webb, who among many other things, and I'm sure he'll tell you more about himself, is the president of the Red Bank area and AACP is going to lead the discussion here tonight, uh, hope, hope, hoping that it will foster some meaningful dialogue about race and justice and to talk about Samuel Johnson, whose jar of memorial soil we have with us on the table here and which is on display upstairs in the library for the rest of the month. So, Reverend Webb, thank you. Without further ado, let's get started. Well, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you for being here. So many smiling faces. Um, where do I start? My name is Kerwin Webb. I uh, president of the Red Bank Area NAACP. Um, and for this project, the New Jersey Social Justice Remembrance Coalition, uh, I'm the coalition liaison which means that I am the go-between between between the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery and our group as we work through the Community Remembrance Project. Uh, Tonight, um, we are here to bear witness to New Jersey's only documented lynching. Now, those words are intentional because there probably were more but the only documented one is why we are here today and one of the impetuses behind why our coalition was formed. So tonight you'll hear a little bit about our coalition, you'll hear a little bit about our project, but most of all, most importantly, what I hope is that we begin to facilitate a dialogue, that there are questions that come from you to me or questions that come from me to you and then we talk because the forces that were at play that allowed Mingo Jack, Samuel Johnson, to be murdered in Eatontown are some forces that are still at play in our nation today. And that's the reality that we have to deal with. And hopefully, after being here to bear witness to this, hearing this presentation, it is a call to action for all people of conscience to make sure, make sure that wherever they are, they stand up and they speak out for what's right. Um, so let's go. I am here a part of uh, the New Jersey Social Justice Remembrance Coalition. Um, this is a picture from August of 2021 with some of the members of our coalition. Um, we started, we joined together at first in 2019. That is when uh, I received a phone call from Tim Hartley and uh, Tim Hartley, Pastor uh, Terrence Porter of Pilgrim Baptist Church and other uh, agencies gathered together at Pilgrim Baptist Church to talk about this project. Um, and the pandemic hit, and so most of our meetings happened this way, with people in little boxes. And so one of the reasons that we all came together tonight is that uh, the Soil Collection Committee Chair, Rabbi Stephen Serebu, said, you know, Kerwin is going to do a presentation. It would be great if we could all support and, you know, see each other outside of the Zoom boxes. And so that's one of the reasons. But I, we started this way, and we got a lot done. This, this gentleman right here, Tim Hartley, he and his wife, Rainy Hartley, um, were traveling, as they normally do, and they went to, let's see, did I have that one right? Ah, Community Remembrance Project. That's why we're here. My slides are out of order, or I'm just out of order, but we'll figure it out. Um, Tim and Rainey went to uh, Selma, the Edmund Pettus Bridge. They were inspired by uh, President Barack Obama uh, for the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday, um, where people, uh, Congressman John Lewis uh, was beaten because people were trying to march for voting rights, and so President Obama, other dignitaries went down to Selma, and Tim and Rainey were inspired by that, and they wanted to walk across the Edmund Pettus Bridge as well. 
while they were there, they came across the Equal Justice Initiative, EJI. And EJI is a nonprofit organization that was started by Brian Stevenson. I have him in here somewhere. There he is. Um, and he went to Alabama to help indigent people on death row, poor people who were being executed, uh, poor, mostly black people who were being executed, uh, and he went down there to defend them. Lo and behold, he's been there, I think, for more than 30 years, and eventually his small law practice evolved into the Equal Justice Initiative, and it is a major, um, major focus or major force in helping to tell the history, the correct history of this nation, the history that is largely left out, the history that is largely uncomfortable for a lot of people. And so Tim and Rainey went to the Equal Justice Initiative. They have two main attractions, the Legacy Museum, from, from slavery to mass incarceration. And while they were there, they were met with many, many facts about American history that many people aren't taught. Inspired, well, this is the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, and these things that you see here are representatives of bodies. In this, they hang from the ceiling in representation of those documented lynchings that they found. And each one is inscribed with the date, the place, and the names of the people, if known, who were lynched in that place. And walking through there, it is a moving and a powerful, um, a, a powerful experience. And all of these, any county that has had lynchings, the Equal Justice Initiative encourages people to come and claim their marker. And so, Tim and Rainey, as they were at the museum, they also saw this, this wall of soil. And each one of these jars of soil, just like the one that you see before you, is representative of a place that housed the lynching the soil from the place where people were lynched. In some instances, the soil was placed in the jars by family members of those who were lynched, and others, volunteers or students who were learning about these tragedies would fill these jars. As part of the Community Remembrance Project, we filled these jars, this and six others, October 24th, 2021 in Waltham Park in Edentown, New Jersey. One jar has gone down to Montgomery to be a part of this display. Right now, in addition to this one, there are five others that are traveling throughout the county and the state. The goal is to bring it to places, libraries, schools, faith-based institutions, hospitals, wherever people will have us so that we can help to tell the story. Because we believe that by telling the difficult truth, we learn, we grow, we get better. So, Tim and Ray visiting the Legacy Museum and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. And this is one of those, this is one of the pictures of Barack Obama at the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Now, this is one of the things that was fascinating. In the museum, you have this interactive map of racial terror lynching. And you see the hot spots. But what you would not expect to see is to continue going north, and you find spaces here. And the thing that shocked Tim and Rainey is boom. One reported lynching, one documented lynching in Monmouth County, New Jersey. And Tim said, huh, I've lived in Monmouth County for nearly 50 years and I never heard this story. And that began his quest to figure out how 
to uh, claim the marker, and that's what started us in uh, was it August, September of 2019. Now, throughout this process, we got to know people. We've gotten to um, have several, several events that were fabulous and transformational. Um, all in service to telling the story about them. On EJI's website, they have a collection of videos, and this one is Terror Lynching in America. And it speaks about how racial terror lynchings were used as a tool of control, a tool of white supremacy, a tool to keep black people in their place. Black people can be lynched for looking at a white person the wrong way, wearing their military uniform, not getting off of the sidewalk, or just because some white person was having a bad day. This was the reality of social control. And although the explicit racial terror lynchings are no longer at play, when we think about the disparity and the discrepancies of police-involved killings, their, uh, their roots could be seen in these types of things. And to be honest, we need to recognize that these things continue to enable certain behaviors that are received as making sure that black people stay in their place. A lot of the research, some of the research that went into our project came from this book, The Murder of Mingo Jack by James Stone. And this small book helped to galvanize people. What was interesting, though, is that it was documented. Things were written. There were New York Times articles about this lynching. And so some questions would be, why? Why, why was this so noteworthy that it made it into the paper? We can only speculate if we do, but we are thankful that it did because that allows us to help people to face the reality that although we are in the North, we are not exempt from hatred or racism or bigotry. Now, one of the things that I found very, very interesting because uh, a few weeks back, Rabbi Serbu and I at University Hospital, we did a presentation for their Juneteenth kickoff. And June 19, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, a few months after the end of the Civil War, uh, the enslaved population in Galveston, Texas found out, hey, guess what? You're free. You're free. Have been for two and a half years, but you're free. Now, the interesting thing is that even after that, slavery was still legal here in this state. New Jersey did not get rid of slavery until January of 1866. New Jersey failed to ratify the 13th Amendment, outlawing slavery. New Jersey, a lot of its riches came from slave labor. So our history books don't tell these things because that would mess up our image of who we are and how noble and freedom loving we are. But we can only become better if we tell the truth. And so this is part of that. Um, October 2021, it was a beautiful day. There were over 200 people in Wampum Park in Eatontown who helped to memorialize Samuel Johnson. And what our team at Equal Justice Initiative let us know is that in doing these soil collection memorials, we want to make sure that the victims of racial terror lynchings, that they received somewhat of a proper funeral. And so there was a somber mood to the day. Unfortunately, I was not able to be with this group, but I saw pictures and some parts of videos, and it was magnificent, and it was glorious. Uh, the Soil Collection Committee did a wonderful job with that, 
and it it really was our first major public event for our community remembrance project and i think it set the bar really high because people became uh they were expectant of what came next Kayla Vincent, who was our Equal Justice Initiative representative that day, spoke powerful words and drew a straight line from the murder of Mingo Jack to the police brutality killings of the day. And how we have the responsibility, we have the obligation to not allow history to continue to repeat itself. Sadly, a week ago, a week and a half ago, uh, there was a young man who was shot over 60 times by the police for fleeing a traffic stop. And it would be easy for people to say, well, he should have just stopped. But the truth of the matter is, it probably was going through his mind that if I stop, I'm going to die anyway, so I might as well try to get away. And I can only think that that is a lot of the terror and the fear that black people had during the time of Mingo Jack. So Kayla Benson challenged us. She challenged us to be better. She challenged us to speak into the darkness and be light. She challenged us to tell the truth. And then, starting in September, we launched our Racial Justice Essay Contest. And this initiative really was open to high school students in Monmouth County to ask them to explore an issue of racial terror violence and how it would connect to um, a current situation. And I will tell you that we were extremely impressed with all of the winners. Um, from the drinking water problem in Newark, environmental racism, um, to just housing discrimination and redlining, these young people really took to the history and what they said was, I didn't know a lot of this happened. And our goal, our hope with the Community Remembers Project is that by learning new things, opening you up to new information, you're able to now think differently about how you see the world. Because how we see things determines how we see things. If we see things as everything is fine and people are just complaining, then we won't really think twice about when someone says this is wrong, but when we know that there are things that are hidden, maybe that will pique our curiosity to say, maybe I don't know as much as I need to know. So we were very pleased in uh, February. No, we actually honored them. The award ceremony was on March the 5th, 2022. So the anniversary of the day that Mingo Jack was murdered. <laughs> Miss Soil Display, one of the ones that's traveling. This one is at T. Thomas Fortune Foundation, the Cultural Center in Red Bank. One of them will be permanently housed there at the Cultural Center. Another will be permanently housed uh, at the Historical Society in Edentown. And then we're looking for other venues while we still have the traveling exhibits. We're looking to keep going for until 2023 as a way to facilitate dialogue, open up people's opportunities and minds. And this is the historical marker that was placed uh, in Wampum Park for Samuel Johnson. It's a two-sided marker. One is lynching in America, which is the general story that EJI puts on each of their plaques on their markers because the story of one place is the story of the nation. E pluribus unum, out of many one. And so we can't dismiss this as a lone, a lone wolf or a, an idle thing. So lynching in America on this side and then the specific story of the lynching of Samuel Johnson. 
And so I will read a little bit of that story. Shortly before midnight, a mob broke into the small jail in which Samuel Johnson was housed. Earlier in the day, he had been accused of sexually assaulting a white woman. The woman recounted that her attacker said, do you know Mingo? And in, in that era, at a time where just the mere mention of his name, it allowed a mob to gather. Interestingly enough, Mingo Jack made pro protest to the sheriff that they're going to kill me. Something to that effect, I'm paraphrasing. And the sheriff ignored it. Put him in the small jail. Went away. And it is reported that there were screams of murder and several shots. And then the next morning, a young boy found Samuel Johnson. Black man accused of sexually assaulting a white woman. Black man is murdered. Sounds familiar to Emmett Till, doesn't it? The things that happened before, when people don't know their history, when people don't know the past, it allows it to continue. It allows people to believe that this will never happen. It will because we don't talk about it. It will because it's difficult. But it is, we believe that it is those difficult moments in life, those challenges that cause us to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, who are we? It's those things that cause us to change. That really shows the character of an individual and the character of a nation. Our work as the coalition, we did the soil collection, we did the essay contest, we installed this beautiful marker but the primary purpose of the Community Remembrance Project is to facilitate dialogue, to talk to people who not only agree with you, but those who disagree. Because if we find out where our points of disagreement are, we're able to more equally or more clearly find areas of agreement. Because we're all human. We all have things and people that we love. And we all know what it's like to be mistreated. Our website, NJRemembrance.org, we will be updating this website with our next steps as a coalition. Because as of now, our Community Remembrance Project, the tasks that EJI assigned to us, we have completed them. However, our soil collection, our traveling exhibit, will continue to go on. Our educational components will continue to go on. And as we regroup as a coalition to decide what our next steps are, we want you to be engaged. We want you to be involved. We want you to know about what we're doing because it takes all of us. It's required that we share in each other's victories, but also share in each other's pain. I am human. You are human. Samuel Johnson human. But during the era in which he lived, people did not see him as human. People did not care that he had a family. People did not care that life was snuffed out. They had a trial. The, rec the reports say it was an exquisite farce that people afterwards admitted guilt, but no one was ever held accountable. And all too often, that is the expectation. So when people say black lives matter and others retort all lives matter, my question would be where? Because they, they should, but we're still trying to get to those ideals. So that's all that I have for now. But I do want questions, I do want feedback, I do want dialogue because this isn't just the Kerwin Show. <coughs> this is an opportunity for us to learn, 
Because if we don't, if we don't allow the wound to heal, then we'll get infected, it'll become cancerous, and then we will die a gruesome death because we chose not to use the extra, which is truth and life. So, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> Questions, comments? Shana. So, what was the response to this whole Asia guy in Alabama? Um, was there support of it? Was there mis genuine support of it? I don't know. You know, living, growing up in the North, you know, we have our own conceptions and misconceptions. And you and I have talked, mm -hmm. um, you know, about like when you see uh, prejudice or racism that sometimes. Like you, you may be even seeing it more in the north than in the south, mm -hmm. which is interesting to me. Um, how does Alabama square this? Do they? So you have pockets. Um, Montgomery is is an area that is somewhat progressive. Outskirts of Montgomery, there are some towns mm -hmm. where I you wouldn't catch me there after dark. And so I think that's similar to a lot of places in Alabama. There are people who would embrace this. They would be hurt by the fact that this is our history, this is who we are. But they accept it because they know um, this was how we made our money, right? We're right there on the Alabama River. So importing and exporting enslaved humans was the way that Montgomery built up. So I think there are those, similar to here, there are those who are here that are willing to listen and willing to sit through, but also there are those that probably say that this, this is something that you should just leave alone, that this is not necessary, that you're just trying to cause division, as if division wasn't there in the first place. All right. Um, okay, so now I've got two other things. Okay. Um, New Jersey was very tied into the South because of cotton, textile. Mm -hmm. um, so cotton was woven or came here, and that happened in New Jersey. New Jersey was the only northern state that I have found in my, my research that considered seceding with the South because its livelihood was bound up um, with, with the South. That's, I, I think, one reason that it was the last state in slavery. New Jersey is called the slave state of the North for a reason. Yeah. Never voted for Lincoln. Um, and, and so what historians will say, like I saw in some of the videos, like um, Brian Stevenson has Just Mercy out and there's some other documentaries or videos where people will in some ways, I don't want to say dismiss what happened, but say, well, this, this they were a product of their time. Minimize. And that type of mindset and mentality allowed it to continue. Oh, well, everybody was doing it. That still doesn't make it right. And then I, I, I saw a, um, a post on Facebook that said that people who are talking about banning books and are trying to outlaw critical race theory, they just don't want to see their grandparents in those pictures. <laughs> because it would really stir up some things. And so it's it's... We have to talk about these things. And one of, the, one of the problems, one of the challenges, New Jersey in 2002, the legislature approved a law, the Amistad curriculum, where it's supposed to be taught in every high school, black history, every school. And it's not. And there's no enforcement to, to make it happen because we would rather not know than to deal with who we really are. And so that's kind of why it's important that everyone who does know, those who learn, share what they know and not be afraid. I have to say when the committee was working on this back in 2010, um, we were questioned, we were followed. Mm -hmm. Things were pulled off the website. Right here, right here. I mean, 
believe it hasn't changed at all. Um, I went to school with some of the defendants that we're all involved in this. Wow. I actually talked to one gentleman, but if I disclosed his name and they put him out there, he would deny everything. Mm -hmm. The door from the jailhouse is just to turn around and you leave. You know, and that was, that was one of the questions that I asked, um, I don't remember who I asked. It might have been in a committee meeting or something, but I was asking how are people responding to this? And the response that I got was interesting because it was like, well, people aren't against it. Okay, so that tells me that they may not, they, they may also not be for it, but they're just not openly against it. And then what you just said about the, the, the things that you guys faced, I, I, am, I am reminded that some of the largest Klan rallies happened where? Right. Right. Long Branch. Right. So, so we, we have a long way to go, and I believe the hope is that those who know will eventually go away, and then those who don't know won't ever know because we don't teach it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Just to, to follow on that, Nico Jack Samuel Johnson was not forgotten even before the coalition came along, and I was just interested for myself, I don't necessarily know a lot about those earlier efforts to lift up that history and remember. Um, so I, I'm wondering if you and the others who reports on it can speak to that a little bit, to connecting to previous efforts. We all came together. It took, um, there was a committee, Sandra Thompson was the lead. I say, sometimes I don't know, maybe 12 of us, um, along with um, James Stone. We all worked together at Fort Myers, that's mm -hmm. it. And because of that little paragraph in Stephen Towns' book, mm -hmm. that goes back and shapes your opinion. Mm -hmm. And we all kind of did our research um, on this. So it's 2010, the original Boulder um, was put down, 2012, we dedicated it. I can't remember all these numbers. I try to throw them out. Um, but we had a lot of support, a lot of questions. You know, and like people said, well, that happened back then. That was my relative. That has nothing to do with me. But we tried to explain it was history. Even though it's negative history, we turn around and it's positive to learn from it. It's still history. And, um, And with the mayor, who now mayor, was on the original committee. We had a lot of support. I mean, we went around fundraising, talking to different people on the right before, funds. Um, then we passed it, and then when Sandra told me current, but we were at a luncheon, remember up in the Thailands, in the Thailands, we were at a NAACP. And you started mentioning, mm, I'm going, yeah, yeah. what? Well, <laughs> you know, um, what's going on here? And then when Sandra filled, filled me in, but um, we came together. We wanted to go further mm -hmm. with it. Um, but um, I don't know, I do have the, the painting in my car, a copy of it. Do you want me to bring it in? <laughs> sure. So they can see mm -hmm. from that picture, because there's no known pictures of Samuel Johnson. And this artist was commissioned to do it, which was actually 
the event on um, egregious lack of um, the great yeah. 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 Get it quickly. She's telling you to Yes, sir. Uh, um, so, Johnson, he, he wasn't a young man when they came for him. He was so, two, yeah, 66. so the two-part question is, number one, did he have any children? And number two, yes. are those relatives still in the area today? He did have children, and our coalition tried to find relatives. Five children? Five children. Um, <laughs> we, we weren't able to find any relatives to, to be a part. Uh, so they may have moved away from the area. Um, but one of the, the, um, the lady at the university hospital who um, Rabbi Serebu and I um, were, were doing a presentation with, she believed that she is descended from Mingo Jack in some way. And so they're still trying to figure out if that is, in fact, the case. And I thought there was also someone either through this library or the West Long Branch Library was connected. She's married to Ohanya. Yes. Ohanya, our Ohanya. director, her yeah. husband's uncle, I believe, is connected. Correct. Yeah. But he doesn't want to be Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I am uh, active with this coalition, but I also would like to make the, to make a public suggestion. Uh, you know, uh, uh, from my uh, from from the floor that you know I have to subscribe. The effort to honor history, and, um, and I didn't know about her work, her ongoing work, and the uh, continuity that exists in Newton Town as far as their people and the, their descendants. Um, I would float it as an idea for you know discussion now, discussion in the future that this would be an appropriate task for the Associate Legislative Members Coalition to uh, back up her efforts. Perhaps, uh, you know, make, it's, it could be possible and it should be done in full consultation with Newton Town residents. Um, you know, you don't want to create stress that people don't want. But, you know, I just described a situation that calls for support, and, uh, in my opinion, um, you know, for further discussion. But it's, um, it seems appropriate that, you know, it be made up as public you know, the door, the rope. Somebody has those in their house? Yeah. What are they doing? And so, sorry, but maybe, sorry. Calm down. <laughs> but, you know, um, it's, it's uh, obviously, you know, and it's, Corona, I was sitting here while you were talking, I was like emotional because I, I don't like to say negative stuff. I don't like to speak negatively, so bite my tongue, but people in this room are in danger now to this day. Yes. And you know, we have to take responsibility for that. And um, the, the work of the coalition isn't over, and, and so figuring out our next step is gonna be our next, um, well, we'll do a debrief of what we had, and then our next meeting will be, all right, where do we go from here? Um, before um, Inez shows us this picture, I do want to acknowledge that Sister Isis, uh, who is here with us, has had um, more intimate experience with um, lynching. And if you, if you would, are you okay to share? Yeah. So I, I will let you share your story. Well, you can do it for me. Yeah. She's fine to do it for me. Okay. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Lorraine Stone. Um, and I can see y'all. Um, several years ago, um, a play was produced, named, which was Black Lives. I'm sure some of you saw it. And the opening um, piece in that play was a poem entitled The Lynching. And Sister Isis gave me permission to write a story about her uncle who was lynched. She was a three-year-old child living in um, South Florida. 
and she witnessed the lynching of her uncle. Um, I, I won't tell the whole story, but he and his wife went to town for some shopping, and uh, something happened and displeased um, one of the white men. Uh, and when that white man was displeased, he struck out at her uncle's wife, and the uncle hit the white man. Well, this was in Florida in 1930-something, I don't know, so you know that couldn't end well. Um, but the wife, husband and wife, scurried home and told the family, get inside, everybody stay inside because there'll be a mob coming. Um, and the lynch mom did come. Um, while the family was inside, the white man said to sister, I said, his grandmother, who was raising her, bring the family out here, bring them out here so they can see this. So the family was made to watch as they lynched. Her uncle. And then, as was fairly common, the family was told not to remove the body. The tree was right in the front of their property so that any time they walked out their door, they could see. And that was the intent. This is a message to all of you and to anyone else who walks by. And so the body was left to hang for more than a couple of days. Um, that is not an unusual story from what I understand. I happen to be um, a, a good friend and so, uh, and I'm a writer and so she chose to ask me if I would write something about that lynching. And I mean, I, I still have the poem if anybody really wants to read the whole thing, I still have it. Thank you. Thank you. This uh, artist was commissioned to do this, to make Samuel Johnson look more human and not a victim. It shows him as a jockey, shows his family and shows his wife as the father of the victim and the police officer taking him away. But these, some of these just came in. Rick texted me today mm -hmm. that people had ordered. Mm -hmm. So from the cover of the original book, this is what they would like to see what he looked like. Um, Jane Stone was supposed to be at the event, but he had surgery. But he's starting to do more research to do a second book. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. But you can get copies of this. This is probably gonna be copies traveling with the, um, soil. With the soil collection. And then I have the Two River Times, which I have I begged two river times. Um, I got other copies, but they end up going out um, where they did a spread. Asbury Park Press was asked to come, but they didn't cover Eatontown. They covered Neptune, Asbury, and other places. Um, what was fascinating was the Horses. I'm trying to think. I haven't eaten, so I'm trying to think the name of the crazy faith riders. Crazy faith riders. They were awesome. And for the main, the first horse to come in with the boots facing 
backwards. That was showing respect to the writer. But um, I can't wait till Andrew's video comes up because it was awesome. And Lynn, I pronounce it right? Lynn? Me? Did an excellent video that was put out. Oh, the one of them walking to the... Yes, there were over 300 and some people. Oh, that's. <laughs> I know, I know. Are you that guy Sorry. from uh, Home Improvement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm used to wearing a mask, you know, and there's a lot of people. But um, so once we have our meeting, which shouldn't be not far. We'll have it on the 28th. On the 28th. Um, so we'll see what our next steps are. Uh, this is this is great support. So this is that, it. Last question. Yeah. It's not a question. I okay. just want to thank the Long Branch Library yeah. for recognizing the importance Absolutely. of this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you for your attention, and we welcome you to join us in our endeavors. Thank you so much. Thank you.